dear friends in this video i am going to discuss probability and decision making part 2 we have already done part 1 and i am going to cover part 2 i am going to do this with a wonderful case study which is thought provoking adapted from winston and albright business analytics for the purpose of discussion let me quickly read out the case a nuclear power company is deciding whether to build a nuclear power plant at diablo or at rogers city the cost of building the power plant is 10 million dollar at diablo and 20 million at rogers city 20 million dollar if the company builds at diablo there is a risk there could be an earthquake in the next 5 years and if it occurs the construction will be terminated and the company will lose 10 million dollar and will still have to build a plant at rogers city and that means you will be incurring 30 million dollars in case there is an earthquake in diablo that's a risk the company has prior information that there is a 20% chance that that could be an earthquake occurring at diablo during the next 5 years and now a geologist is available for consulting she will charge 1 million dollar to predict whether the earthquake will occur or not in diablo plant uh, and the past record of the geologist prediction ability is 95% of the occasions for which an earthquake will occur the geologist is correct 95% of the time when there is actually an earthquake occurring and 90% of the equation occasions the geologist is correct in predicting no earthquake when actually no earthquake occurs should the power company hire the geologist so 95% accuracy in predicting earthquake when actually there is an earthquake and 90% accuracy in predicting no earthquake when actually no earthquake let's now look at the probabilities one is the prior probability we will come to the posterior a little later and i am using some symbols g equal to the geologist predicting correct predicting earthquake g bar geologist predicts no earthquake e earthquake occurs e bar no earthquake occurs now in this table instead of the decimals i am converting them into 100 occasions out of the 100 occasions 20 occasions earthquake occurs 80 occasions earthquake doesn't occur now the geologist is 95% of the time correct in predicting the earthquake which means 95% of 20 which is 19 occasions geologist predicts earthquake and there is an earthquake now 5% of the time the geologist goes wrong which means 5% of 20 is 1 so one out of the 100 occasions the geologist is wrong or one out of the 20 occasions when there is earthquake the geologist predicts no earthquake so overall it is 20 19 geologist exactly tallies with the actual earthquake but one occasion geologist is wrong and therefore out of the 20 one occasion is wrong similarly 80 is the 
situation of no earthquake and 90% of the time the geologist is read, uh, correct in predicting no earthquake. So 90% of 80 is 72. So 72 out of the 80, the geologist is correctly predicting no earthquake. But the geologist has gone wrong 10% of the occasion and therefore 10% of the time the geologist actually what I would say predicts the earthquake when there is no earthquake. So 8 out of the 80 is wrong. 72 out of the 80 is right. She, not he, sorry, she is right. And uh, uh, 19 out of the 20, the geologist is right. 1 out of the 20, the geologist is wrong in predicting earthquake, no earthquake. This is the table. Now add these marginal totals. Overall, 27 occasions the geologist predicts earthquake. 73 occasions the geologist predicts no earthquake. And everything tallies. This is the prior probability. Now the first thing I do here is, let's do the exercise without the geologist help. Suppose the, it, it actually uh, sort of uh, goes, let me not hire the geologist. Let me see what is the situation. Here I am using the concept of decision tree. A square box represents the decision situation and alternatives. A circle represents states of nature or uncertain events. So there is a choice for me. Build the plant at Diablo. Build the plant at Roja. The cost in Diablo is $10 million. $20 million is Roja. But what is this 14? Let me answer. So when you build the plant in Diablo, there is a risk. 20% of the time earthquake occurs. 80% of the time earthquake doesn't occur. The probability is 20% of earthquake and no earthquake is 80%. So 20% of the time when there is earthquake, you will terminate the plant in Diablo and still build it in Roja, which means overall I am incurring $30 million. How? The Diablo plant is terminated. I have already sunk $10 million. And new, again, plant, new plant I am building in uh, Roja. And therefore, 20 plus 10 is 30. So 20% of the time, or the probability is 20% that I will have to spend $30 million. And the probability is 80%, in which case there is no Diablo, uh, no earthquake in Diablo, I will only spend 10. Therefore, using the weighted average concept, 0.2 into 30, 0.8 into 10, this is 6 plus 8, 14 is the expected cost of building the plant in Diablo. 14 means 14 million ton. In Roger, there will be no earthquake. I will incur 20 million dollars. So which is cheaper? 14. And therefore, based on the expected monetary value criterion, this 14 million is cheaper than 20 million. Therefore, build the plant at Diablo. Do not build it in Roger. So this is the part one of the decision tree. In other words, if I don't hire the geologist, this will be my decision. Okay. Now, let me look at the second situation. Suppose I hire the geologist. There are some numbers. We will come to them one after the other. Hire the geologist, that could be uncertainty. The geologist predicts earthquake. Okay. The geologist doesn't predict earthquake. Overall basis. 
Now, if the geologist predicts earthquake and you take a decision, build at Diablo a nuclear plant, build at Roja, you have two choices. But if you build it in Diablo, there could be earthquake, no earthquake, but here it is conditional probability posterior earthquake given geologist predicts earthquake. Okay. And similarly, geologist doesn't predict earthquake, you still build a plant in Diablo or Roja, your choice. Earthquake occurs, earthquake doesn't occur, but here it will be earthquake given geologist predicts no earthquake. It is no earthquake given geologist predicts no earthquake and these are the cash flows. Now, let us plug in these probabilities, but before plugging in the probabilities, it is very clear when the geologist predicts earthquake, you build it in Diablo and there is earthquake, you normally incur $30 million. Why? The plant will be terminated in Diablo, you will build it in Roja, 20 plus 10 is 30. But you will have to pay $1 million consulting fee to the geologist, hence it is 31. If there is no earthquake, the cost of building a Diablo is $10 million, but uh, you will have to pay the geologist $1 million as a consulting fee, so it is 11. Similarly, here also it is 31 and 11. This will not change because you have hired the geologist. But what will change is these probabilities will no longer be prior. They will be posterior probabilities. How do I get them? Let me go to the table here, the posterior probability table. Now, 27 occasions the geologist predicts earthquake, 73 occasions out of 100 the geologist predicts no earthquake. In other words, the probability geologists on an overall basis predicting earthquake is 0.27, no earthquake is 0.73. But now, if you look at it, this is inverting the probability. Originally, you were given the data, geologist predicts earthquake, given earthquake. But what you want is ULTA, earthquake, given geologist predicts earthquake. So, geologist predicts earthquake 27 occasions, out of which Actually, the earthquake occurs is 19 and therefore the posterior probability of earthquake given geologist predicts earthquake is 19 by 27, which is 0 0.7037. 8 by 27, which is 0 0.2963. This is the posterior probability of no earthquake given geologist predicts earthquake. Similarly, the geologist predicts no earthquake is 73 occasions, but one occasion, earthquake, given geologist predicts no earthquake is 1 upon 73. Now, no earthquake, given geologist predicts no earthquake is 72 upon 73. And I do it for four decimal places. This is the posterior conditional probability, the classic way of inverting, which is the hallmark of Bayes' theorem. So E given G, E bar given G, E given G is this, E bar given G is this. Then I have here E given G bar, E bar given G bar. And these probabilities, my dear friends, I'm plotting it here. 0 0.7037, 0 0.2963, 0 0.2963, 0 0.9863, and 0.9863, a beautiful problem. Now, I do the backward recursion, 31 into this probability, weighted average cash flow as before, 11 into the probability here, which will give me the overall weighted average cash flow or the expected monetary value or expected cost of building the plant in Diablo 
is 25.07407. Let's say it is 25.07 million dollars. Roger, if I build, it will be only 21. So I put a green tick here, build it in Roger and cross it here. Do not build it in Diablo. So whenever the geologist predicts the earthquake, build it in Diablo. When the geologist predicts the earthquake, do not build it in Roja. Sorry, build it in Roja. I'm sorry. When the geologist predicts the earthquake, do not build it in Diablo. Build it in Roja because it is cheaper by about $4 million. So the green mark is build the plant in Roja when the geologist predicts the earthquake. Supposing the geologist doesn't predict the earthquake, here... I have the cash flow 31 into 0 0.0137, 11 into 0 0.9863, which is 11.27397, the expected cost of building the plant in Diablo. Roger, it is 21, is costlier and therefore cross it, build the plant in Diablo when the geologist predicts no earthquake. But now we saw in the previous table here, overall 0.27 is the probability geologist predicts earthquake. 0.73 is the probability geologist predicts no earthquake because it is out of 100 occasions. Therefore, 27 by 100, 73 by 100. So I just do that here. In other words, this Roger cast which I plugging in here occurs 27% of the time when the geologist predicts uh, earthquake on an overall basis. And this Diablo cast 11.27397, which is the right thing to do, but it occurs 73% of the time only because the geologist predicts no earthquake 73% of the time. So now 21 into 0.27 or 0.27 into 21, plus 0.73 into 11.27397, the weighted average cash flow, which is the expected monetary value, which is the overall uh, cost of hiring the geologist is 13.9 when you simplify this. So overall cost of hiring the geologist is $13.9 million. And when I don't hire the geologist, it is $14 million and therefore I am saving $0.1 million, which is pretty high. 0.1 million in decimal is only 0.1 million. It's actually $1 lakh. Dollars. So what is the conclusion? This is a sequential decision. When the geologist predicts earthquake, build the plant in Roja. When the geologist predicts no earthquake, build it in Diablo. And the overall cost of hiring the geologist on an expected monetary value basis is 13.9. So my first decision is hire the geologist because it is cheaper than do not hiring the geologist. And therefore, let me write the conclusions here. Decisions. First decision is sequentially hire the geologist because expected cost is 14 million without the geologist and 13.9 million dollars with the geologist hired a saving of 1 lakh dollars and therefore my decision is hire the geologist. If the geologist predicts the earthquake I have hired build the plant at Roja because the cost is 21 million dollars which is cheaper than Diablo, $25.07 million. If the geologist predicts no earthquake, build the plant at Diablo because the cost is $11.27 million, which is cheaper than at Roger, $21 million. And therefore, I conclude by saying decision one, hire the geologist, then sequentially, if the geologist predicts earthquake, build the plant at Roja. If the geologist predicts earthquake, no earthquake, build the plant at Diablo. 
And this is the beauty of decision tree, which can handle the sequential decision making, which is the hallmark in most of the time using the Bayesian analysis or the conditional probability being inverted, which is the power of information and insight. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I conclude probability and decision making part two with this magnificent example. I hope you have enjoyed. Thank you.